right. I'd like to welcome our next speaker. Uh, it's Lucas Opiowa. Oh, yeah. So Lucas is a researcher at the Academic Computer Center Cyphronet, AGH, University of Krakow, involved in multiple Polish and European research projects. He is also a developer and co-creator of the One Data System, a distributed data management platform for science. His research areas are virtual file systems, distributed and decentralized architectures, data access control, and AAIs. Today he's filling in for his colleague, also Lucas, um, and he's giving the talk today, One Data as a Platform Distributed Repository for Virtualizing Data and Long-Term Preservation. Welcome. Thank you very much for the introduction. <clears throat> Let me just, it forgot the settings, but I'm gonna have it up and running in a sec. <clears throat> Fully. Hmm? No. Can you try turning it off and on again? Yeah, so <laughs> probably need to do that. Of course, I tested just before the session, <laughs> and it worked, but it's the, uh, you know. Ah. Yeah, so just on and off again and... Okay, thank you for having me here. So I represent the One Data System and uh, I'm in the minority probably of people here who don't uh, work with data a lot, uh, but definitely are related to distributed data management. So I'm gonna be kind of a different perspective maybe hopefully <clears throat> on that. So who we are, what's One Data? It's an open source project. It was started 11 years ago um, at the University of AGH University of Krakow and Cypher and Supercomputing Center. And our um, our goals is to are to deliver data management platform for large scale distributed problems and enable global collaborative data sharing across federated domains uh, and streamline data processing in setups when you have heterogeneous data, st uh, data storage systems and in hybrid clouds. So uh, we are mostly uh, supported by, uh, supported in the scope of European and Polish scientific projects working on case by case basis close to the scientific community to solve some da data management problems, distributed data management problems. And let me try to break down this very long title into maybe some smaller components. So distributed data repositories. Uh, I don't have to explain to this crowd that we live in a world of distributed data. And from the user's perspective, it's like you can look at it at, as multiple data sources uh, that are possibly and usually geographically distributed, the user w wants to have access to, process, move between the locations. Um, and at the same time, other user may have access, of course, has access to different data sources, but some of them can be common for, for the two users uh, so that they can collaborate uh, on the same data. And in one data, we we do the we try to unify access to the geographically and organizationally distributed data so when we have data sources kept on heterogeneous storage systems in different data centers that can be autonomous uh, independent organizations we want we create a layer a logical namespace uh, called spaces where we, we organize logical data uh, over physical data located on the storage systems uh, and the logical data, so this unified layer, is then used by users and working groups to collaborate and to process. And this is done by installing our software in the, within the data center, which does all the visualization magic. And about data visualization, so we take 
the data sources from different storage systems. We have storage drivers. Uh, it's a unified interface. It can be ex you can implement support for other ones. Currently, we support eight different storage backends, including S3, HTTP, POSIX, FNFS, WebDAV, XRD. So this is to get the, to access the data on the underlying physical storage, which is then it is abstracted into our logical one data namespace. But then to access the our namespace, uh, we also have several interfaces. Mo the, the most important, usually, for most of the projects we work in is, of course, POSIX, and it's, uh, this is the one we started with, but then other use cases came. Uh, so we can mount the whole one data virtual file system into a Linux, POS Linux POSIX file system and actually see it in whatever you come online, your uh, file browser, and use it as, uh, as you do use local files. The POSIX mount is based on the Fuse library. We also have uh, REST, CDMI, and, and REST APIs, a user-friendly web UI uh, that's as close as possible to, to standard file browsers. Uh, we have a PyFS plugin, so you, it's kind of like POSIX mount, by, but you get uh, your data mounted in the uh, Py file system space. Um, S3 interface, which is currently in beta, and we also have this uh, pr new project running with, uh, with uh, our collaborators from the Czech Republic. They are implementing uh, wind, even Windows Sync and Share. So n we, even if we have a working prototype, so you can actually see the one data as one of your directories in Windows, which is nice. And then, but going back to the POSIX uh, mount, which is quite critical for scientific use cases. Uh, it gives you uh, the direct storage access, so high performance computing capabilities uh, for processing, the processing data with one data. So we have this mode, data access mode called direct IO, when the, our client applications can actually talk directly to the physical storage. Of course, given that they communicate with the servers for the metadata, uh, which is not not much, for example, to open a file and then read and reads and writes go directly to the storage systems. And this way, with a little overhead on the metadata communication, you can squeeze out a really nice performance. For example, if you deploy our client applications on a worker node inside a data processing center that's interconnected to the storage using InfiniBand, whatever fast interconnects, you can have pretty much all the capacity available for the, for the data processing. And also, uh, due to the fact that quite a lot of researchers use Python for data processing, uh, we have implemented this one data FS Python file system plugin. It also it has the same storage drivers as the one client. So one client is POSIX mount, one data FS is the Python file system actually using the same storage drivers for directly accessing the physical storage, but then wrapped in the Python abstraction layer. And of course, you can also mount it on your local computer. Why not? The performance will not be as great. OK, so we have the data sources distributed, and the data is scattered. <coughs> well, at this point, we need some way of data management and data, and data transfers and uh, we do it on a chunk-based uh, level. So every file is divided into arbitrary sized chunks, and the chunks can actually be distributed uh, among different locations. And the data is delivered on the flight. So if the data needs to be re read in, a f in another location, it is pulled in the background. And you can you may not care about this and just use the system as if it was a monolithic directory with all your stuff of course it may not be optimal and operation may take time but if you are aware of the location you can manage the distribution you can pre-stage you can migrate you can move the data close to the computations you can also define a quality of service rules that will do it for you continuously 
whenever the data is updated, it will be reconciled. And so this is the view of the transfers, uh, showing the active data transfers between sites. And we implement this um, uh, transfer uh, data transfer protocol that uses parallel channels to try to squeeze out as much as possible from network links. So based on some tests that we, some internal tests with link, 20 gigabit links, we were able to uh, get like 50 to 56, 50, no, okay, uh, 50, sorry, 52 gigs uh, per second. Um, yeah. And we go, we get to the last part of this very long presentation title, the long-term preservation. So when implementing that in one data, we, uh, uh, we, we based our model on, on, the, uh, on the ideas of open archive our information system. So I'm not going to go into details here, but basically it defines three levels of, uh, of data when, when it's ingested, how it's held in the system, and how it's presented to the consumer in some standardized way. And uh, we also have the idea of data sets, uh, which is quite, a, maybe there is an analogy between data at Git Annex. Uh, so uh, you, the data sets can be nested, and you can take snapshots, kind of, we call them archives, although you may look at them as snapshots of the data, which can be incremental. So only the stuff that changes will be actually copied, another one will be reused for the previous ones. And uh, yeah, so kind of an analogy. Um, and this is how it looks in the UI. Uh, we have uh, support for multiple formats. Uh, uh, for example, the, the bucket format. Uh, due to some collaborations that are coming up, we are considering also the raw crate format. So both for ingestion and then for dissemination, you could upload uh, well, the idea is it's kind of pluggable, so we can extend it, but it's it's the matter of translation, really, as as it was said before. Uh, but it it's extensible. Um, yeah. So having this system, uh, you can go, you can manage the whole data lifecycle. Uh, so it's kind of a feature-rich platform for data management when you can start with data acquisition, so ingestion into the system using multiple different methods, and then consolidate, aggregate, so you can organize data sources in the single logical namespace, establish some data structure, replication as needed, then process, uh, analyze thanks to the HPC capabilities. Uh, you can also uh, do it in multiple locations simultaneously, including data rights, so you, should act, you can actually write to the same files from the same file from different locations. The, the screenshots of the data distribution you saw before is actually not a common case, but if you write to a file uh, from different locations, this is what you get. You get a file that's chunked between locations. And then uh, annotation, so you can assign some arbitrary custom metadata. Of course, you can impose the, the standards and the schemes that you want. So JSON, RDF, or key value, uh, key value metadata. And finally, uh, create archives using the, the idea of data sets and archives uh, to have this kind of a long-living snapshot that will, this is read-only. Uh, holding the packaged annotated data, and finally publish it. Uh, so either using semi-public link-based sharing or open data publishing. We integrate with P PID or DOI minting services and advertise the published data using the OAI PMH protocol. And of course, this is not a closed cycle because this can evolve and, and be iterative. And so uh, this is, well, this is uh, a short presentation. So one data is a bit more that, that, was, that I'm presenting today, but I'm not going to go into all the details. But basically, we try to provide a unified data management service 
that we, we will cater to the most common needs of, of different data, distributed data management scenarios. Um, currently, uh, we have quite several one data deployments, mostly in Europe and in Poland. Uh, the biggest one has 20 sites and 2,000 data spaces. Uh, we also do some internal project with Polish government that's going to hold 100 million files. Um, uh, yeah, and our the way that we thrive and develop is uh, by collaboration or with different in different projects that have specific use cases, trying to build some data processing pipelines and fit in there with, with our possibilities. So one idea is the Eureka 3D project. Uh, uh, so they scan 3D, they, they do 3D scans of museum uh, items, so cultural heritage objects, and then they are ingested into one data, annotated, and then published as open data and con this open data and this, those open data sets are then indexed in the European uh, platform that kind of harvests such data sets from different sources. So this is just an idea of, of what we do. We also uh, currently are integrated with the uh, Galaxy project for, uh, for workflow processing. Um, and yeah, so before a conference, I tried to answer the question, well, okay, so what's the difference between data lot and one data? Maybe to be a step ahead of you. And I tried to do it, okay? Yeah, I'm, clo I'm close to the, to the end. Um, yeah, so I'm relatively new to data a lot, so, uh, but I tried to get a gist of that and, and understand the main differences. So please collect, correct me if I'm wrong, but a data that is more of a distributed data management tool that will impose data set structure, track your changes, record provenance, reuse data sets, reproduce results, or allow you to get reproducible results, maybe. And of course, collaborate, reusing the Git approach, which is a very good Git, very good approach to collaboration, of course. As a, and as a developer, I definitely appreciate that. Um, it requires a certain technical background, yes, um, but offers a lot uh, uh, in exchange. And then one data is more of a distributed data management platform. So from a point of view of data, it would be a storage provider, maybe the data infrastructure you talk about when you, you want to integrate with some backend storage provider. Um, it's an open source software stack. So basically it's not a existing system you join. It's something you can take and is install from scratch in your infrastructure, whatever, is it an or organization, a federation. Um, and it has the, a different uh, a different level of, of collaboration. So it's it's shared directories, so you actually can sh share the data like, let's say, Dropbox fashion. So you don't get all the stuff, the collaborative stuff, of course, from data lab, but it's on the sorry on the data level, not on the um, more logical level. And then we try to focus on user friendliness and cater for different research fields. Uh, of course, uh, I'm not saying. Uh, it always is super user friendly, especially when more advanced features are taken into consideration. But I thought, okay, so maybe one data actually is a candidate for a data that's special remote. And this is something I want to talk about with you. Maybe you will be interested. Maybe this is, will, could be a topic for a hackathon. I don't know. Uh, this is just an, just an idea. But from, from what, what I see is I'm here like comparable to on cloud, Google Drive, Dropbox. This is this kind of like relations between data lab and one data. And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention.
Okay.